Mice Shrimp. Thank for joining for tasting time. Oh. Katie O'Reilly and welcome to KDO's Food Carnival. Family meal bites. Let's put it on the table. That's what we're doing here. I am here to definitely walk you through some fantastic weekday meal bites. And what I mean by that is let's talk about some recipes and ideas to create for your family maybe some friends maybe that extends to other people but either way big or small i want to get you cooking i want to give you the confidence and i want to walk you through some great ideas we're going to start with sunday and go through thursday because weekends start on friday so we're going to anchor ourselves on sunday night with a nice homey meal and we're going to kick it off from there so join me in the carnival kitchen let's go it is Sunday and we're making dinner for the family. We're gonna make a flank steak roulade stuffed with spinach and Asiago cheese and a little Parmesan in there with a rustic tomato sauce, some roasted fingerling potatoes, and some colorful grilled veggie batons. Wow, that sounds intimidating. I'm here to give you the confidence to do it though. You have time, it's Sunday. Where are you going? Let's spend some time in the kitchen. Once I, one thing I know about my family, large or small, whatever, as soon as I start heating a pan, they come a running. And it's perfect because it's an excellent opportunity for us to talk and communicate and catch up while I'm cooking. Clearly you can see I have an open kitchen, so they sit and they talk with me. But as soon as they start smelling that food, they want something to eat. So each of these days, I'm gonna address what to give them. So let's start with a veggie crudite. It speaks to everybody and it's healthy. And we can make it fun with colors and dips. There are so many colors available. You can either have it in a platter where it's kind of sectioned off. You can have it in individual cups. These are just paper ones if your kids are younger or your family's older or whatever you have going on or people are kind of walking around. This is the best thing because you're gonna get their veggies in them before the meal starts. So it's better for you than a bread basket or anything kind of processed like a chip. So I'm gonna just tell you, I love buttermilk ranch. Mm. Beautiful meal starter. Let's jump right into that roulade. Well, let me show you how it's done. I have before me a flame stick that I have pounded out. Okay, take your mullet and pound, pound, pound. What you wanna make sure you do is break up these tendons so it's nice and flat. It doesn't have to be paper thin, but fairly thin, you'll see. Okay, beautiful green leafy spinach. Oh, that is so fresh. Now keep in mind, spinach always cooks down a whole lot, so don't think you're overstuffing. Asiago cheese has a beautiful, beautiful, sharp flavor, but both the Italian cheeses, Asiago and Parmesan, have a lot of salt in them. So that's why you did not see me salt the meat beforehand, because we don't want to over salt, we won't be able to control it. So you just want to let the salt come naturally, and then the spinach, when it cooks down, is going to blend with that, so the water in the spinach is going to make sure it's not too salty. You take that beautiful piece and you just roll like so. Oh my gosh, see how easy, see how easy? Now, we have our string and we tie up our meat so it stays rolled when we cook it in the oven. Just do a little mini knot, don't be shy. We'll cut those strings before it's served just because that is the trick. Okay, we're gonna stick it in the oven. We're gonna cook it at 400 for about 15 minutes, depending on the size, sometimes 20. Now you measure and make sure you check, but the internal temperature, you really, it's not a thick piece of meat. You're just cooking those ingredients inside. So here we go, you can do two or three, depending. And we'll be right back for our final product. 
with a little kitchen magic, we have our fully cooked flank steak roulade. And I'm gonna show you. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut those strings that we just put on. So cool and fun. And because we don't want anybody eating string. So let's make sure, that's number one. We remove all string and remove from your cutting board so it doesn't accidentally get in your food. You're gonna see how amazing and beautiful this is when we slice and sharpen your knife. Everybody deserves to have a beautifully sharpened knife. And look at the roulade we've created. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Look at that. And plate up is just a couple of pieces, depending on how hungry everybody is and how thick your slices are. Oh, incredible. I love to do it with a little rustic tomato garlic sauce. And if people like it on or just around, I don't want to take the beauty of the roulade away. Voila. Like I said, I paired it up with some beautiful color fingerling potatoes. Just blanch them, olive oil them, stick them in the oven, and grill up some veggies. It, this is an amazing meal. So satisfying. Tons of vegetables, but also very meaty and hearty and over the top delicious. Everyone's gonna be home for this Sunday meal. It's gonna anchor your week. We'll be right back into Monday. KDO's Food Carnival respects the fact that Monday is a tiring day for the world. Absolutely, and what most of us wanna do is pick up that phone and order food. However, we've probably overindulged on the weekend, which is what weekends are for, and now it brings us here and we have to cook. So what do we do? I call it Meatless Mondays, and I'm gonna make it super simple for you. So you're cooking for you and your fam. What do you do? A vegetable lao fried rice with teriyaki grilled cauliflower. Sounds elaborate, but it's not. Okay, starters, because when that food hits the pan, we know everybody comes running. Best starter in the world for you as the chef is edamame in the shell. It comes in a bag, it's frozen, you puncture it, you put it in the microwave for five to six minutes till it steams, you pour it in your bowl and you salt it and let your family do the work. What you're actually seeing, in case anybody's not familiar, I'm gonna show you, these are soybeans in their pods and they are super healthy for you. And we call them edamame and they're delicious. They do need a little salt. Beautiful. If you're boiling them up, put a little salt in your water. Perfect. Okay, moving on to the meal. Fried rice is fantastic and easy for Monday because it can be cooked the day before. Fried rice is best done with the chilled rice. You can do it in the morning before work and just leave it on the stove after it's done cooking in its pan and come home and it's room temperature and cook it up then. I usually mix mine with that Lao sauce that I've told everybody about, which is your, I've taught it in previous episodes. It's your caramelized ginger, shallots, garlic with a little sugar, fish sauce, cayenne pepper, and it just reduces and it holds in a jar and you've got your sauce already made. Mix that in as your seasoning so you're gonna get some of that sweet and savory spicing that's actually done by you. So it's flavored the way you like it to taste. Mix that also with a little diced, you could just do onion if you want. I like to add a little color, whatever you have in your fridge. Little peppers, I did a little red pepper, little yellow pepper, and a little scallion, because I had that, especially if you did the grilled vegetables the night before and you have any left over, dice those and put those into your rice. That's a beautiful reuse for those. Okay, not much prep on that. You saute, you fry up your rice in a pan. Cauliflower, take your big, beautiful cauliflower. Now cauliflower is usually really affordable. It comes in those big flowers. You slice it so it's thick like a steak. 
throw it on your grill, okay, in nice places. A plancha in the kitchen, whatever you've got going on, even a pan if you need to without oil, just to char it up a little bit. Take it out and mix it with your favorite teriyaki. Now, I'm not talking about that thin teriyaki like sauce from a jar. I'm talking about a teriyaki base. And there's a difference because there's a thickness. I am not expecting you to go and make your own. What I'm expecting you to do is go and find a product that speaks to your palate. If you'd like to make it a little thicker, mix it with just a little butter as you're sauteing it up. Now I'm gonna show you how incredibly glazed it looks after it's done. So amazing. Okay, your rice, your cauliflower, and this is time for everybody to build. How cute. They can do a small bowl like this. And I have accoutrements. Little egg, scallion, carrot threads, and then some spices, sriracha, garlic chili, soy, cilantro, sesame seeds. I suggest you let your family build because it's fun and entertaining. Let's say you're so tired, you had such a bad day, Chinese to-go containers, then there's no dishes. And for a real playful treat, bring it on with the chopsticks, especially the disposable one. And now, you can just hang out and relax on Meatless Monday. And feel so good, and no dishes. Loving it! Katie's Food Carnival on Tuesday. Tenderloin Tuesday. Now I'm talking pork tenderloin, a bre marinated breaded pork tenderloin that is going to wow your entire family. And it is not difficult. We have a little bit more energy on Tuesday, so let's throw it in to our meal. This is gonna be fun, but let's remember, what are our starters? What are we putting out for everybody to nibble on? Some olives, so easy. If you can't find a variety that you love the flavor of, mix them with a little olive oil, little fresh herbs, do whatever you need to do, spice up, bring up those olives. They are delicious. I love an olive medley. They're healthy and nutritious and full of zesty flavor and they allow your hunger to still come out. So these are a good one. Tenderloin with Mediterranean couscous. How do we even deal with the tenderloins? Well, once we pull it out of the oven, we let it rest. Don't forget, it needs to rest for about at least five minutes for all those juices to get sucked back in. It's fabulous. So let it sit. Your Mediterranean couscous. So many people are unaware that couscous is actually a pasta. So we need to flavor it. How do we flavor it? With Mediterranean flavors. Okay, so often on cooking shows and in recipes, people get intimidated to cook pork tenderloin. And I don't get it because it is one of the most phenomenal meats to eat if you're a pork eater. And it's a family favorite but you have to treat it the right way. So what I'm gonna show you is in order to do the tenderloin, we wanna marinate it for 24 hours. So you can do this the day before, stick it in your fridge. The marinade is simple. Buttermilk, literally, just buy your buttermilk and a little Dijon mustard, okay? I'm just gonna actually use my hands on this because when you're cooking, sometimes just getting down and dirty is the way to be. So what you wanna do is make sure it's all coated in there and covered, and you are gonna stick this in your fridge, like I said, covered for 24 hours. When you are done, coming right back, I had to wash those, those gritty hands. When you are finished with your marinade, now this is what the tenderloin will look like, and what we wanna do is take it out of the marinade and lacquer it with just a little olive oil, okay? And then we are gonna cover it and bread it in panko breadcrumbs. I've mixed these with a little bit of parsley so they have a little extra flavor. You wanna do a little garlic powder in there. You wanna coat it completely. 
tack it on there. The olive oil makes the panko stick. Okay, so that's why a little olive oil is good. If you want, pack a little extra coating on there. Stick it right in your oven. Put it on your cookie sheet. And once again, let me wash my hands and show you how it's gonna look when complete. This is beautiful. You're gonna stick it in the oven, cook it for 15 minutes at 350. 15 to 20, depending on how you like your pork. Some people like it more well done. But this is gonna be juicy and tender and delicious. And everyone in the family is gonna love it. So pork tenderloin Tuesday. And that's an amazing dish that everyone will love. And it's gonna definitely bring brightness and acidity and flavor to that palate. Creamed corn. No, I love fresh corn. And when you cut it off the cob, add it with your cream and make a little roux, add it with cream, cook it down, add some infusion of flavors in there, a little bay leaf, delicious. Once you've got that going on, top it with a little cotija cheese, which is like a Mexican Parmesan powder. It's got this aged bite that's beautiful on there, not too heavy or aggressive. And then a little guajillo pepper powder. Just a little hint of spice and a little cilantro. This meal is delicious. It's intriguing to everybody in the family. If you don't use eat pork, you can use the substitute of a lamb tenderloin if you'd like. It's moist and flavorful. Pork can be eaten a teeny bit pink inside, but definitely not raw. So keep in mind when you're checking your cook time. And this couscous, bright, palate forward, inviting, and nutritious. And I can't skip this cream corn. Mmm, a little flare of creaminess. Everything you want on a plate for everyone in the entire family. Enjoy. This is a gather meal. Tuesday, time to talk. Talk about the week. Tuesday tenderloin. I am doing fish on Wednesday. We went steak on Sunday, meatless Monday, tenderloin Tuesday, and now we've got fish, beautiful fish on Wednesday. What are our starters? Because when we flame up those ingredients, the crowds come a running and they wanna hang in the kitchen and they wanna eat. Today I'm just showing some cheese displays. Now you can go elaborate, you can go simple, whatever you have. I've paired it with some dried fruit, dried apricots, dried cherries, golden raisins, figs, fun stuff. Your cheeses can be really unique and imported or they can be simple and what's in your fridge. Just set them out, beautifully presented, gorgeous array of crackers. One of the tricks, I'm just gonna tell you a couple little highlights, goat cheese, cover it in honey, garnish it with like a dried herbs de Provence or lavender or something you may have. It's amazing. I'm just gonna show you how beautiful this can be. Look at that and then decorated with a little dried cherry and apricot. So satisfying, you just don't need much. Those are your snacks for the crowd. Fig jelly or preserves, any kind of anything you pick up in a jar that goes with cheese, put it out now. Okay, leave that, you're going to cook. The menu is highlighting grouper piccata in parchment with some braised, lemon braised broccoli with a little Parmesan dust. And then I'm showing two different varieties of a pasta side. One is an actual spaghetti, puttanesca, the other is a butternut squash spaghetti, puttanesca. One is completely gluten-free and it's low carb because there are no carbs in it. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you, starting off, parchment, our fish and parchment. Now your fish, let's start there, grouper, white fish, cod, halibut, any of those beautiful hearty fishes will work. They have a larger flake, they absorb the sauce, they're gonna stay moist. All fish stays moist in parchment. How do we wrap in parchment? Let me show you. Why cook fish in parchment paper? Because it keeps it nice and moist. It holds its moisture in. It's a 
fabulous way to cook your fish with all its natural juices. All you need is, this is our nice six ounce piece of grouper. Honestly, a little salt, a little pepper, and we are in business. That's all I want you to do to your fish. You're gonna open up your parchment, you're gonna place it, and you're gonna wrap it just like a gift, okay? So we are gonna take the two sides, we're gonna fold them over, we're gonna seal, we're gonna fold it over again so it's nice and snug, and then, voila, tuck under, tuck under. And that is our little parcel. I'm gonna clear away my board, bring it up to pace. Look at how pretty already. And how do we make it piccata? Piccata is a fabulous blend of sauteed mushrooms, lemons, and capers. You make a roux, you mix it with your chicken broth or your veggie broth, depending on what you wanna do, and it's fabulous. So we cut into our parchment paper just slightly, just to open it right up. Once again, our little package is revealed. It's nice and steamy and moist. And I say you just peel it back, but leave it in the paper. We take our beautiful sauce, and this is our piccata sauce, so no mistakes, this is our flavoring. It holds right in that paper. I'm gonna peel this back so that you can see that. Make sure you can see how glazed that is. This is whipped cream with lemon. And we put that right on there and it melts in the heat. Fabulous. This is really gonna be a delight to eat. Our sides, like I said, spaghetti puttanesca. Puttanesca has garlic. It's a, it's a tomato, rustic tomato sauce with garlic, capers, Italian black olives. That same sauce can go directly on that butternut squash spaghetti. When you roast the butternut squash, they scrape out just like spaghetti. So amazing, you're barely gonna know its difference. Braise your broccoli, keep it large, and keep its integrity. So you don't wanna overcook your broccoli. You don't ever want it mushy. So if anything, leave it just slightly a little bit crunchy. You do want it steamed and still soft and supple. And you wanna take out that, that edge to it, but you don't want it to be a mushy plate item. You want it to have some toothsomeness. And when we put a little lemon in the water, lemon braised, it becomes bright and cheerful. It also holds its bright green uh, color on your plate. All of the flavors are really highlighting each other. Dust the broccoli with a little Parmesan and you are in business. Because you don't wanna put Parmesan on your fish because fish and cheese, it's still a debate. I don't know. Some people like it, some people don't, so I say stay away. Put it on your broccoli, perfect. Or you could put it, of course, on your pasta. So I'm gonna show you that when we do in parchment, it all holds together. Look at this small little plate, and it is beautifully presented. That butternut squash. Mm. Carries the sauce so beautifully, has a little crunch, a little texture, I love spaghetti too, so if you're a pasta lover, go there, it's your starch, but you don't need it. Get creative, it depends on how much fun you wanna have. On the fifth day of cooking, my true love made for me, buttermilk fried chicken with a smoky corn chowder and bacon sauce. Oh my God, over the top, and it goes on buttermilk fried chicken. I don't know what could be more dreamy. And of course I top it with a little hot sauce, which is the total treat. Okay, instead of taking you over to the stove, I'm gonna walk you through the ingredients. You make your roux. Actually, what I want you to do first is actually saute down your onion, white onion, your 
celery with a little thyme, black pepper, and bay leaves. Okay, you're gonna just saute those down, get them nice and full of that beautiful olive oil and soft and clarified. After that, I want you to roast your corn on your grill. Whole cobs, throw them right on the grill. Get it nice and smoky. Cut it off the cob and look at that. That charred, beautiful, beautiful corn. So delicious. Sweet, tender, smoky, excellent. Crispy bacon and some red and yellow peppers just sauteed soft into a pan. Okay, we've got it going on. This pan is hot and savory and we add our butter and we add our flour and we make our roux with our ingredients. So beautiful, so delectable, it becomes a real amazing thickened base. We add a little heavy cream and then stir in your bacon and your corn last minute and look at what we have. And the beauty is this get scooped right on to our buttermilk fried chicken with our grit. And what do we have for dessert? Well, I'm showing you a few varieties. First of all, I strongly recommend that you enlist one of your family members to make dessert because you just cooked. So go tell that baker, that person who claims to bake a lot, to go bake you something. If nobody in your family bakes, well then let's get back to the basics of what we can actually do. I love grilled fruit. Grilled fruit kebabs, I'm gonna start with that because they bring out their natural flavor. You just had some delicious food. It's colorful, it's bright, it's fun, it's cheerful, and you can do it. And it's not outside your realm. Mm. Doesn't really matter if your fruit's not that ripe too, because when it hits that grill and that heat, it pulls those sugars so that it stays too some. You don't want to grill it too much. But then it becomes bursting in your mouth. Really beautiful. And the sugars just fly to the top, especially with the pineapple. I love that. Cookies. Cookies, cookies, cookies. Cookies and pair them with some of your dried fruit. Because cookies are amazing. I usually do like a snickerdoodle because they're simple. It's a sugar cookie with cinnamon sugar or an oatmeal raisin, which is one of my favorites. I love oatmeal cookies, and raisins are natural sugar, and I, I just, they give a good texture, and they're not too sweet. I am a gigantuan fan, and my Midwest girl, I love apples, I love apple crisp with an oatmeal crumble top. Cinnamon sugar, that could be my go-to. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I could eat this. That is amazing. Look at this. What is Boston Cream Pie? It's your vanilla cake mix with vanilla custard, if you can see that, and a chocolate ganache frosting. It's a creamy cake with frosted cake. I like all of these and I've chose my favorites. Strawberry cake with strawberry frosting and fresh blueberries and raspberries. Where do you go wrong with that? I don't know. I don't think you do. So, I'm gonna show you that this is amazing. I've actually whipped fresh strawberries into the frosting. I've layered it. This is a white cake, and it's not actually vanilla. It's more like an angel fruit cake. Mm. It's moist, it's fruity, it bursts in your mouth with that layer of strawberries, and then you get the additional fruit on top, and the color is brilliant. This family is so proud of you. You deserve a hand. You should be proud of yourself. You have just cooked up a storm with me. I love it. Join me again on KDO's Food Carnival. Don't forget, go to my website at ktofoodcarnival.com for full menus. I have some of the recipes and I'll tell you anything you need to know. Stay in touch. See you next time.